currently a little bit after 4 a.m. Um, so on request, I have been asked to do a bit of a day in the life video. Um, so this is going to be Walk the Walk Raw episode two, which is going to be a day in the life, which is uh, <laughs> honestly pretty repetitive for me, if I'm honest with you. So day starts the same way pretty much every single day. Um, I get up about kind of half three, four a.m. Um, I get downstairs, get myself a coffee, do my lipolytics do any kind of, any kind of uh, anonyms that I need to do in the morning, obviously post prep um, light politic load is just kind of like in that kind of transitionary period from where it was kind of high to kind of moving into a baseline level so things like thyroid supplementation is down to replacement levels um, can be rolls pulled out in totality, sometimes that's titrated down depending on kind of what dose you rather start um, but that's out in totality so kind of replacement dose is thyroid um, any kind of anagens, any kind of ejectables I do first thing in the morning as well um, sometimes I do kind of push it to the later end of the day but as of right now I'm doing it first thing in the morning so it's all kind of double dusted before I start my day and um, you will have seen I come back upstairs have my coffee bit of dark chocolate in this case a white chocolate just a little bit of a treat and um, I do my journal entry I plan my entire day from start to finish um, and then <clears throat> I'll read a page of the Daily Stoic and just kind of get the head right and then from there I'll jump into my first work block generally my day is split up into three separate work blocks so I have work block A work block B work block C work block A is generally an hour to two hours first thing in the morning um, I'll go into my cardio at about kind of 6 a.m. Um, and then I'll come back shower pose and um, start another work block which is generally going to be the longest one which is kind of somewhere between kind of 7 a.m through to the kind of mid-afternoon i'll generally then go and train come back again shower eat and then i'll do my final work block which is about kind of three to four hours again so generally work times are anywhere between kind of like you know 10 to 15 hours a day depending on kind of how you know, heavy the workload is, how high the roster is, um, kind of what time of the year it is, depending on how many athletes I have peaking and stuff like that. So, as of this week, I don't have too many athletes peaking. I don't actually have any athletes in the British this weekend. Um, so things are a little bit softer. Um, the kind of game plan this morning is to do my international prep check in. So I have Liam, who is starting prep down under on Monday. Um, so get him and his final details over to him this morning, and then I have a setup to get done as well. Um, and that is pretty much it for work block A. Then I head off as I said go to my cardio come back and I'll jump back into the remaining check-ins that I have by the time I get back normally my UK guys and girls who are on prep have checked in as well and I'll just rally those guys out because they're not waiting any more than an hour or two for their feedback most of them are less than five weeks out and um, some of them are seven weeks out um, and I think the person who is currently the longest out is actually Nisra who is currently uh, we're, we're hoping about 10 and a half 11 weeks out so um, generally that's how my morning runs it's pretty repetitive um, but it allows me to be super productive in the early hours of the day um, when nobody's really awake you know when I kind of have a whole host of notifications and messages coming in it tends to kind of take me off kilter a little bit so I can get up I can have no messages no distractions Grace is asleep Rohan's asleep I can knock out everything I need to knock out first thing in the morning and then you know everyone's awake then by the time I kind of get back from cardio and I'm going to start my day as it stands so you know it just allows me to structure my day in the way that suits me um, and personally I like getting up early I like knowing I'm going to up before the birds um, and it also means that by the time it comes to the evening like I'm going to settle down and get to bed early about kind of half nine ten o'clock um, so we're going to take you through my day and um, we're also going to take you through my pull session which is the pull session on the new split um, currently hanging around with a little bit more of a kind of premeditative progression approach I'm kind of resetting everything back to a baseline level of not only execution but just of overall load you know at this point in time post prep where the body is somewhat delicate um, but it also is incredibly sensitive it's a really really good opportunity to just kind of reset re-establish baselines make sure that you're moving with a high degree of skill and quality and you know just running up numbers from a baseline foundational place that is of a high quality which is one of the things that i need to do because i've definitely allowed the the chasing of numbers and the running up in the logbook to get away from me before where a lot of my movements and a lot of my focus became very external rather than internal and you know in eventuality as we move things up there will be that kind of like perfect harmony of kind of intensity load and execution where it does get nasty again and you know the inner me head in me can be kind of released so to speak but uh as of right now it's a case of kind of being patient and focus on being better um you know because at the end of the day more isn't better better is better but if you can build more on top of better then that's better 
that's a lot of word better anyway i'm gonna crack on into this work and um, i will pick you up again most likely before i go and do cardio give you the update on how i'm running things in that respect i'm gonna crack on from there but anyway this is walk to walk raw episode two day in the life Um, so essentially with every athlete that comes on board there is a kind of consultation process um, whereby I pick up as much information as I can about that athlete and then I will obviously relay that into the setup and the systems that I create for that athlete you know within the timeline and um, within the needs analysis within the nutritional setup within the AAS stack design setup all of that is based off the information that I pick up across that kind of first kind of five to seven days um, and then off the back of that I will take however long it needs to be generally it's a couple of days to get everything set up and then passed over to that athlete and each athlete is given their system via Google Drive and then it's also accompanied with a kind of like a full walk through video for myself that's just kind of going through the nitty gritty details of everything and just relaying everything back in to give them the full understanding that they need to kind of take everything on board um you know in the case of pro coach we deliver an awful lot to the athlete straight away um and you know one of the things that you'll learn as you coach more and more high level athletes is that a lot of them aren't really used to things like sheets and systems and you know kind of um things that maybe if you want to call it kind of more high end if you want to kind of call it that or more systemic so it does help to be able to you know kind of provide that clarity and kind of you know kind of unwrap everything so that they're fully aware not only as to what they're getting but why they're getting it um you know, one of the biggest things that's had an impact on my capacity to work with the athletes that I do is probably the creation of the timelines. Um, you know, being able to kind of map out the competitive journey for the athlete, no matter how far away they are from the goal, is a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, because it not only provides you with a roadmap and provides you with something that you can actually relay to the athlete, but it also, again, it just it allows the athlete to see the journey that they're about to go on. It solidifies that you have had a definitive thought process about where this athlete is and where they want to go and you have actually broken down that into you know attainable steps and when you see it in attainable steps you know no matter how long an athlete is away from stage or wherever their goal is be it a pro card be it a national level competition whatever it's going to be it never looks as long when it's broken down into each individual phase and that in of itself creates buy-in you know and it creates a definitive impact on the athlete straight away so if you were a coach and you're not utilizing timelines and you're not utilizing a kind of systemic phase-by-phase approach that the athlete can actually see and relay back to themselves i'd highly recommend good morning you good Right, so uh, headed off to do my cardio now. So despite the fact that we're obviously in the kind of off season, one of the things that I am keeping in is daily cardio. Um, definitely from like previous off seasons, well, the kind of the one previous off season that I did, um, I definitely started to kind of disregard just kind of the maintenance of overall CV. Um, it was kind of largely due to kind of workload um, and probably a lack of organisation for the most part. But and then also with that, probably um, slightly lesser commitment than I have now. Uh, if I'm being totally honest with you, so kind of I spoke about in the first episode of Walk to Walk Raw the kind of the kind of summation of the show weekend that I'm approaching this off season rebound with the exact same kind of attention to detail as I did prep, um, and so far that's been maintained. So it's cardio daily um, I also do two to three sessions of hit a week and um, just kind of 10 minutes of heavy interval so it's like it's like legitimate interval training so it's kind of you know 10 to 20 seconds on 40 to 60 seconds off um, which is kind of like legitimate hit training and then I also train abs every other day and then calves every other day as well so um, so far everything's been moving quite well everything's been going the way it's supposed to um, and I'm actually really enjoying the routine because again it just allows me to get the vast majority of things that I need to get done done in the early hours of the day and then that kind of frees up the evening for me to to be honest just be able to get to bed early um, so nah it's been good um, so I have a pure gym that's about 
you know, kind of five, ten minute walk away. I knock out a couple of steps. I sometimes take a slightly longer route so I can actually get a little bit more steps in because my steps are kind of set to about 10 to 15k a day. Again, just maintaining that kind of attention to detail despite the phase that I'm in is something that I've told myself I'm going to kind of maintain and be attentive to. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm going to go get this done. Um, should be, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour in and out and that should be it dusted but I'll pick this up again probably in the next couple of minutes might do one of those things where you point the camera at the piece of cardio equipment you know angles and all that um, and we'll crack on from there but anyway peace love chat this in a bit so just wrapped up cardio and abs um, a pretty eventful morning I meant to like break up a bit of a situation when I got here. <laughs> not gonna go into too much detail, basically some old dude was screaming at some of the staff and uh, I had to go full fucking 2015 martial arts mode on him because he was like threatening to basically bite the nose off a girl and then went to grab her. Um, but that's it here or there, it's all sorted now. Um, so just a little condition check, this might not even make the video, but uh, holding pretty well at 94 kilos this morning. Um, you know, I kind of depleted myself down pretty hard so far as kind of getting to stage condition to the point where, you know, when we kind of layer in the variables that are in play now, it's going to be pretty hard for me to get fat, um, especially considering I keep my food in check for the most part, you know, everything is kind of structured and steady and I'm not doing anything too crazy to kind of blow the waist out, so I'm kind of keeping things tight and the plan is to maintain, you know, a pretty reputable level of condition throughout this rebound as, you know, when I pushed it towards whatever it was, kind of 250, um, at the peak of my last off season, I was pretty fat, and I would love to try and move towards kind of 250, 260, but maintain a better composition over the course of the next couple of months. So we'll see how that goes, we'll see how that runs, um, but I'm pretty confident we can do it. So, oi, puppy, Rohan, are you coming or not? Watch, I'm gonna go upstairs and you're gonna run away. Are you coming? No? Right, come on, we can bring it downstairs. Right, so it's a couple of hours later. Um, we've gotten home, had a shower, uh, done some posing rounds. So I pose every other day, basically. Um, and then check in my car once a week on a Tuesday. But the kind of posing rounds that I'm doing during the week, I'm just going to keep them for my own review. And then if I fancy sending them over to where I will. Uh, just about to jump on the pro coach team meeting. So we also have a team meeting every Thursday, 9 a.m., where we just kind of go through the week, uh, speak about any kind of issues we're having, kind of just, you know, just, just run through some of the back end stuff. And just make sure that everyone's kind of comfortable running through the week so i um, have that now and then i'm going to probably knock out a little bit more work because i ended up kind of giving the office a bit of a spruce and so i'm about kind of half an hour 40 minutes behind schedule but you know to say kind of tidy environment tidy mind um and then i will likely eat in the next kind of hour hour and a half um hoping to get two meals in prior to training later on about kind of one o'clock half one so again i'll pick this up in a little bit but gonna crack on drink coffee do this meeting and i'll update you in a bit yeah right so meal one and um, generally i actually have cream rice for meal one but just uh this is a little bit quicker to prepare because i like to put the cream rice in the freezer so we have uh, 170 grams of pineapple we've got 250 grams of chicken and then we're going to have 250 grams of rice as well and um, i'll also take my tamasart with this meal and um, i'll also take one oral that i'm currently using throughout the first couple of weeks of this push-up as well that i won't disclose and I'll get another meal in prior to training as well. This isn't going to be my full day video or anything, this is just a day so I'll go through my meals and my meal set up in a little bit more detail over the course of the next couple of videos. But for now, we're going to get meal one in. Generally, I'm splitting meals across the day, uh, 125 grams of carbs, about 12 to 16 grams of fat, and then 40, 50 grams of protein. So total numbers are uh, 600 carbs, 300 protein, and 60 fat on training day. So that's the uh, coaches meeting wrapped up. Went and got myself a blue monster or a turquoise, whatever you want to call it. Um, and now I'm going to dive into some check ins. Um, you know, <laughs> this day in life has proven to be quite boring. Um, you know, my, my day is pretty repetitive, but people did ask to see it. Uh, so, going to jump in and have a handful of prep check ins now and then a couple of off season check ins as well. So, get those done and then I'll probably get another meal in and then. I will do a setup, or at least the majority of a setup, and then I will go and train and then come back and have my final work block um, and my final couple of meals as well. So um, that is pretty much it, ready to rock and roll. Um, I will catch you guys on the flip side of this caffeine. Let's launch it. So, um, <laughs> don't tend to get a moment's peace here. 
<laughs> uh, shut up, shut listen. Um, so that is a handful of check-ins wrapped up, um, and I'm going to get myself ready to go and train now. Uh, going to get a meal in, and then I am going to bring this little guy over to the gym, and then hopefully when Grace is leaving, she'll take the dog, and then we can kind of transfer it that way. So obviously being doggy parents means we have to be uh, a little bit kind of attentive to the fact that he can't really be left on his own, at least not yet. Um, but uh, it just means that we kind of have to run our days around him. It's really relaxed, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so gonna get a meal in, gonna go train. I've got a pull today. I'm gonna try and record some of it, um, and I'm not gonna run through it as I am gonna make separate videos in terms of gonna run through the split and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, that is pretty much the first kind of two work blocks done. Another one to do later on when I come home, and then that'll be pretty much the end of it for the day. But anyway, I will pick you up in a bit in the gym, and uh, I'm gonna, I might do a voiceover. But to be honest, because this is more so like a day in life, I might leave that for a separate video. But uh, all in all, pick you up in a bit. Peace. Right, so pre-workout and pre-workout meal going in. Um, so one of the things that people often don't realize about pre-workouts um, is the actual like way that the ingredients kind of build within the blood in terms of blood volume. Like caffeine and most of the ingredients in pre-workouts are going to take about 45 to 90 minutes to actually reach any kind of peak blood volume, i.e. be as efficacious as they're going to be. So kind of looking at kind of like 45 minutes to an hour is a pretty good time to actually take in your pre-workout and whatever you're using and um, so personally i'm using train by jp dialing and pumpage and um, i find that the combination is really really good in terms of overall blood flow and getting a pump and then the stim and the focus element of the dial in i find is to be honest contested by absolutely no other pre-workout so massive massive fan but just be careful as if you are somebody who is interested or kind of uses high stim throughout your day it might just push you over the edge a little bit then pre-workout meal is 120 grams of cocoa pops and 80 grams of blueberries so 80 grams of banana and a handful of blueberries, frozen blueberries. I don't actually track the blueberries because the calorie volume is quite low and I keep it consistent all the time. Um, I'll also do kind of 30 to 40 grams away with this as well into a paste separately um, and 20 grams of honey. Um, so I'm going to get that in now. Generally, I would get this in a little bit earlier, but just kind of needs most busy, busy work day. Um, so getting it in where I can and I'll train in about... Um, 70 minutes to an hour, I would say I'll actually start my session, but I'll get moving and make my way to that for the next kind of 45 minutes. Uh, so just getting ready to go and train now. Um, have definitely overcooked it on the caffeine consumption a little bit. Um, I had like a coffee this morning, then I had another coffee, a monster, a dial in. I kind of forgot about the second coffee in the monster earlier on. But uh, definitely a little bit overstimulated, but Sure, look, we'll use it to our advantage. Um, pull on the cards, gonna go and wait for Grace to come back, and then I'm gonna dip out and get this shit on. Turns out I don't have pull today, um, it's actually legs. Um, messed up my own split, but we're gonna get it either way. So, uh, legs on the cards, I'm gonna get like small clips of each exercise. I'm not gonna allow this to take away from the session too much because that's the last thing I want, but I will get a little bit here and there. So, let's go.
Right, so that is pretty much my day done. Um, I just wrapped up uh, another work block where just kind of a handful of check-ins. Generally what I do in the later end of the evening is I keep kind of like a softer bout of work so it's not too much of a kind of overall demand so I don't tend to have too many check-ins. It's more so like programming or setups and things that don't require me to kind of like, you know, too communicative. I could just kind of crack on because obviously it's post-workout and it's post-session so the brain tends to get away from you. Um, now at this point in time, like with sessions, nothing's too outrageous. Um, I'm just kind of resetting baselines and just getting myself back to a kind of high quality execution standard across the board. So it's not too crazy in terms of the impact it's having on my ability to kind of think and just be somewhat proactive within work. Um, but that is pretty much it. Um, I have another meal to get in, but like I said, I'm not going to be centering this one too much around food as I want to make another video kind of going through how food is set up uh, throughout this next kind of, you know, 8 to 14 weeks of moving north. Um, but again, this is like the first kind of proper vlog I suppose that I've done um, you know at the start I kind of stated that it might be a little bit boring because my day is pretty repetitive I'm up early I work I do check-ins I eat I go train I come back I do check-ins repeat um, but honestly I, I love how my day runs I love my life I love what I'm doing I love my job and uh you know this is kind of how things tend to run day to day but overall what i am going to start doing is you know when there's events on when i'm traveling for shows and i'm going to meet clients or i have clients arrive in the house i do kind of in-person check-ins every so often i'm going to start documenting all that as well um and you know just kind of let's start layering more of the you know the kind of experiences that i'm having as you know both an athlete and a coach into all these um because obviously a big thing for me is to try and make these somewhat different to you know vlogs that you've watched before and just kind of give you an insight into you know ross the person ross the athlete and obviously kind of ross the coach um so without further ado i will park this here and um, thank you very much for watching if you got this far i will catch you in the next one all the usual crack like comment subscribe tell your ma tell your auntie tell everyone peace and love Slam